Pascal's wager. Pascal's wager. The wager is not the best argument for God's existence. It's not really an argument for God's existence at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. But by my lights, it helps to put things in perspective. <clears throat> and uh, from that point of view, I think it is a successful piece of natural theology. I get the feeling that when Pascal first wrote on the wager, he really didn't get the chance to fully flesh out his idea. He did die, after all, uh, with the pensées still in outline form. So maybe the problem, um, maybe the problems that this or that particular skeptic has with it, with the wager, is basically on the faulty assumption, based on the faulty assumption, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, maybe the problem that people have the maybe the problems people have with the wager is that they don't take into account uh, that it was uh, merely in outline form uh, part of a larger argument perhaps uh, which wasn't explicitly uh, written by Pascal um, at the time that he uh, died it wasn't fully fleshed out and formalized uh, what he was trying to say. Uh, since he did not apparently get the chance to finish it, I feel free to take liberty uh, in how I will uh, uh, explain it. I'll give it in my own, my own form. And this uh, argument, while it's, it's never been my favorite argument um, in natural theology, it does seem to be the favorite uh, argument that uh, skeptics will bring up uh, to uh, criticize and, and attack uh, when they're talking about um, Christian apologetics um, and why they don't uh, uh, find it compel f find those sorts of arguments compelling. So, so this is the one of the first things that they tend to bring up uh, when they're trying to uh, refute the arguments of their. Um, opponents. Alright, part one of Pascal's wager argument is as follows. Uh, premise one, if it cannot be proven with absolute certainty that God does not exist, then God may exist. Premise two, if God may exist, it surely is the height of folly to live one's life as though God definitely does not exist. After all, uh, such a godless life would be to live, uh, to, to live such a godless life, would be to live contrary to the evidence one has that God may possibly exist. Moreover, there are severe consequences if one is wrong in their guess that God does not exist. Premise three, it cannot be proven with absolute certitude that God definitely does not exist. Conclusion number four, a godless life is foolish. Before moving on, I'd like to point out that if premise two is accepted, then the wager may be transformed into Plantinga's modal argument. And premise two, briefly, is that if God may exist, it is surely the height of folly to live one's life as though God definitely does not exist. Uh, so if we accept that premise, uh, then it seems we would have to accept uh, Plantinga's modal ontological argument. And what that would mean as that it is not only possible that there might be a God, but absolutely certain that God definitely does exist. But I'll leave that uh, aside, that digression aside for now. I think all three premises in part one are modest. Atheists have been diligently searching for millennia and haven't found any compelling arguments to support their claims. Compelling to rational persons that aren't already atheists, I mean. Moreover, most professing atheists today, it appears, openly admit they do not possess absolute proof or total certitude that there is no God. Yet in the absence of such proof, then it is not absolutely out of the question that God exists. So no matter how implausible or epistemically improbable, it seems we have to admit that there is a non-zero probability that God exists after all. So premise one is more plausibly true than not. But all of this, 
uh, but all of this consideration of the acceptability of the first premise includes um, the acceptability of the final premise. Um, so again, the first premise, if it cannot be proved with absolute certainty that God does not exist, then God may exist. And that the final, that's the first premise. The final premise, it cannot be proven with absolute certitude that God definitely does not exist. Um, so we can say that uh, premise one and premise three uh, should be acceptable uh, to all rational persons, even if they are atheists. What of premise two? If God may exist, uh, then it is foolish to live as though God definitely does not exist. Well, let's see. Um, uh, that proposition should be immediately obvious to you, uh, for I have offered its justification within the premise itself. And that's when I went on to say that uh, a godless life would be living contrary to the evidence one has. And that evidence is that there may be a God, so we shouldn't live the, uh, as though there definitely isn't a God. And there are more over severe consequences if one is wrong in their guess that God does not exist. So um, the, the premise that it is foolish to live that way, in a way contrary to the evidence, the evidence that God might exist, um, uh, that is uh, justified by uh, those facts that I just uh, reviewed with you. All right, so, uh, so far so good. Uh, the premises are all uh, acceptable, are all true. Uh, they should be accepted as such uh, by all rational men. Uh, but is, the, is this argument valid? Yes, the argument is valid for the logical form of part one is if P then Q and if Q then R and P, therefore R. If P then Q, if Q then R, and P. So since P is true, Q is true, since Q is true, R is true, therefore R is true. And R is the conclusion, number four, a godless life is foolish. Uh, so that's clearly a valid argument. Uh, so part one is, is sound. It's a sound argument. Not only valid, the premises are true, so it is a sound argument. Now on to part two of Pascal's wager. Uh, premise Five, if a godless life is foolish, then it is better to believe than not, than not believe. Uh, premise six, a godless life is foolish. Conclusion number seven, hence it is better than not to believe. Premise six is merely the conclusion of part one, uh, so that is acceptable, an acceptable premise, a true premise. Uh, what can we say on behalf of premise five? Well, the opposite, uh, actually, I'll have to get to that in part two. Uh, thank you. Shalom. Uh, I, I mean, I'll have to get to that in the second video of this series. Shalom. Out.